Hi, I'm Matthew Huffman. I'm a PhD student here at McGill University in theoretical nuclear physics, and I'm one of your TAs for Physics 102, Introduction to Electromagnetism. I wrote the questions that we're solving in class, and in these videos, I'm going to go through some of the harder questions, the more involved ones, or ones we just don't get to in class but are important to see worked out, and I'm going to break them down step by step to show you how a physicist would approach these problems and hopefully help you to approach these problems yourselves. So today we're going to be going back and looking at a system that we were considering in class. So this system was three charges arranged into an equilateral triangle. So here I'm going to draw that out. One charge, two charge, three charge. Each one of these has a side length L, because it's an equilateral triangle. And we'll call this charge Q1, which has a value of plus 2 coulombs. Call this one Q2, which has a value of plus 3 coulombs. And we call this one Q1, which has a value of plus 1 nano coulombs. So the first thing you want to do now is to set up a coordinate axis. It's always important to do when you're approaching a physics problem is just clearly define your x and your y direction. So call that x and that y. It may seem obvious to you, but sometimes you can choose a particular x and y to give you a simpler result. Okay, so what we did in class was we recall that q1 and q2, oh, sorry, that one's q3. Q1 and Q2 exert a force on Q3. All the, all the charges here are positive, so like repels like, and Q3 feels a repulsive force in this direction. We call that F3. Okay. And what we solved is that the magnitude of F3 is equal to 0 0.0436 newtons. We're not going to need to use the direction in this case, because what we're going to do now is we're going to add a spring. We're going to add a spring that connects and directly opposes F3. Now, typically, in these problems, we assume that the three charges are fixed, meaning that they're not allowed to move. That's why this is called electrostatics. Now we're going to get a little bit into an electrodynamics question, so bear with me. But we're going to only allow this spring to contract by one millimeter. Ah, the side length L that we choose here is set L equal to 30 meters. So if we only allow that spring to compress by one millimeter, in the scheme of 30 meters, that's not very much. Doing this question properly does involve the use of calculus, but we're not going to do that because this is not a calculus-based course. So what having the side length 30 meters and the spring compression here only one millimeter does is it allows us to say that the electric field and therefore the force felt by Q3 is constant. That will come up in to be important later. But first what we want to do is find the value of the spring constant that only allows the spring to compress by one millimeter. So we'll call that spring constant Ks. Typically we call the spring constant K. What we're going to do here is call it Ks, so K spring because we also have the Coulomb constant, which is K. We'll call that K electrical. It's actually not going to come up in this problem, but for the sake of this, let's keep these vari various variables straight. Okay, so we know this, and we know that that spring directly opposes that. We also know that delta X is equal to minus one millimeter, or minus one times 10 to the three, 10 to the minus three meters. So why is this negative? So what we're going to do is we're going to review springs briefly. Every spring is some object on the rest of the spring here. So this spring has a spring constant Ks, and we're going to define the central point of the spring, so the place where the spring is neither compressed nor extended. We're going to call that zero. Now, if we extend or compress the spring, if we, first let me define our coordinate axis. This is why it's important. So every spring that we deal with, we consider a coordinate axis that's not a very good color for this. It's the color I was using before. So 
let's choose, how about blue? That looks pretty close, but okay. So we call this our x direction. So at x equals 0, there's no force. But if we compress the spring, see we go below 0. So that's why we have delta x is negative 1 millimeter. Okay, that's something which might trip a few people up. So now what we're doing is because we know that the force from the spring directly opposes the force from Q1 and Q2, we can set up a force balancing equation that just says F spring plus F3 equals zero. Notice these are, are both vectors, so they have directions, and the directions oppose each other. So that means that if they oppose each other, we're going to get a relative minus sign between them, but it means that their magnitudes are equal because they exactly balance out. So let's rewrite that as magnitude of F spring is equal to the magnitude of F3. Okay, well let's think back to physics 101 now. The spring force is given by F spring equal to minus Ks delta x. Call delta x a vector, it's minus 1. It's going minus 1 meter. Okay, so we know this. So the magnitude of this is just going to be so magnitude of F spring is just going to be minus Ks delta x. And because we have this force balancing equation, we can rewrite that here. So let's write minus Ks delta x equals F3, we already know the magnitude of F3 down here, so it's equal to 0 0.0436 newtons. All right. Let's rearrange. So if we're looking for Ks, it's equal to 0 0.04. 3, 6 newtons. Bring the minus sign over to that side. Over delta x. But delta x is just minus 1 times 10 to the minus 3. Minus 1 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. Okay? So I can put this into a calculator and solve. And what we find, this has been a bit of rounding here in the last place, but spring constant Ks is equal to 43.59 newtons per meter. And it's always useful to go through these problems and identify the units and carry the units throughout the entire problem. This is because it's an easy sanity check. At the end of your problem, does it make sense? So let's consider the units of the spring constant. Ks has units of newtons per meter. So for every meter that this is compressed, it'll give you a force of 43.59 newtons. Makes sense. Our units check out, and we have our answer.